Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're going to be bringing you part two of our fish room tour. We're going to head to the other side of the fish room. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and take a look at it. I will put a card right up here somewhere so you can look at that and see what we've got going on on this side of the, of the fish room. On the other side, we've got another 20 tanks with some fish that are growing up, starting to get some color. So stay tuned and we'll show you what that looks like. As we get into this side, we've got the 150, the couple 75s. There's 255s in the corner. We have our 420 longs. That There's a couple 29s down below there. And then over here, we have the 9, 10 gallons. And we'll kind of go over what's in these, what we're doing, what we're breeding, what babies we have as well. We'll start here with the 150. I haven't really added anything new to this tank. Uh, we did add a couple bristle nose from our breeding tank just to keep working on the glass and the decorations because like I said I don't like scraping tanks. Um, fish are getting bigger. The red shoulder severum is probably the one that's changed the most since the last fish room update. Uh, he's getting to be pretty close to the size of these two gold severum. Frontosa that's gotten a little larger as well. We do have some hornwort in this tank. Big surprise, it's in like everything. Uh, and we do that because the Severums love to eat it. So it's a nice snack for them. They get their greens, the tinfoil barbs will snack on it. Uh, as you can see right here, the silver dollar will sometimes go and snack on that stuff as well. So it's a nice food source uh, for them. And it's a good way to get rid of the stuff when we have way too much of it. So that is the 150. If we come on over here, this is a tank that is going to change uh, when we get some more time. It's the 75, it's in bad shape, at least in terms of the hardscaping. Cool fish, just doesn't look very nice. So we've got a big green Severum in this tank. And he's definitely bigger than the size of my hand. Uh, that red tail shark is also huge, probably seven inches at least, maybe bigger. Uh, big Geophagus Hecali right here sorry for the stuff that they just stirred up i scared them when i walked over here you can see the big green severum um, and then we've got our leaf tinapoma that's a cool fish he just kind of chills out it's a predator fish but he doesn't everything in here is too big for him to eat so he winds up just eating flake food and pellet food like everyone else and we give these guys the occasional blood worm and brine shrimp treat as well uh, that we've got our pearl garami. I think that's probably my favorite type of garami. Uh, if he was in the light, it would show a little bit better. But that's a cool fish. But this 75 is going to get broken down. Uh, it's going to get broken down, and we've got to do something with it besides making it look like that. Uh, right up above, we have our other 75. And this was the tank that we added the Sahikas to. And so they've gotten bigger. Not drastically so, but they are definitely growing, as are the Geophagus pellegrini. So we have, I, th I want to say, eight of the Sahikas and then nine of the Geophagus. So they're getting, uh, they're starting to grow. Didn't lose any, which is awesome. And we still have the three electric blue Jack Dempsey's in here. And with their size, everything's working out great so far. Uh, we'll see if it does long term. The Jack Dempsey's might be a little bit too rough for the rest of these fish, in which case we will move some stuff around. But we're just starting to get to the point in this tank where fish are coloring up a little bit. The Sahikas, some of the males are starting to get that red on the dorsal fin. So pretty soon, they got pretty blue eyes too, if you see right here, the little pretty eyes. Uh, relatively peaceful so far but they're just starting to get to the point where they're coloring up. Same with the uh, Geophagus. They're starting to get a little bit of red on their dorsal. So it's gonna be a little while still before they really get their colors and really start to shine. But when they do, we'll make sure we bring it to you because it's, it's gonna be something cool to see. Come over here. Down here, we've got our Geophagus Tapajos. And we've got four of them in here. We had a female uh, lay some eggs in that thing, uh, cave. And they were guarding it, the male and female were guarding it, but then they just kind of let things go and they fungused up and we didn't pull them in time. So you can see there, we've got our dominant male and at least one of these is a female. So we're gonna have to see, hopefully they do, uh, they give us some eggs again 
and I will be quicker to pull them next time so they don't get fungus. And uh, this is definitely a fish that we want to breed in the future. Okay, up top, the other 55, we have the Eurekan Reds. This is a boring tank, uh, at least in terms of fish. We've just got right now our three females and the male is where he usually is down below. This is a tank that's going to get some updates in terms of hardscaping and we may move these fish out to a different tank. Uh, I don't think they need this much room. Down here was the recently updated 29 that has the quarry cats for albino quarries. And there are also three black angels which are still small and like to hide. They're in there, they're in that plant. Trust me, they're there, I can see them. Uh, so we've got the quarry cats, the three angels, and there's a couple bristlemos plecos in here as well, one albino and one brown. And there's actually some cherry shrimp I just noticed the other day. So I'm not sure if those came from when I moved the plecos in, they must have, but uh, so this tank is, we're, like I said, we're still gonna add some Tetras to this tank and really get this thing to pop here uh, in the not too distant future. We'll move up. 20 long, it's got a male pink flamingo guppy. There was a female in here, she died. But I'm leaving the male in here because he likes to eat the green hair algae on these plants and has done an awesome job of that. Uh, there are also four Bolivian rams in this tank, believe it or not, and they are all hiding because they don't appreciate when I do a water change. And we did one frequently or recently on this tank. So they're hiding. We move up. This is the tank that now houses the lemon drop long fin plecos. There's one back there, one back there. There's three more roaming around in here somewhere. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. These are going to be cool when they get bigger. They're still pretty small, but they're going to be pretty awesome. Okay, down here we have a 29 that is filled with Geophagus steindachneri fry. Uh, we recently sold a bunch, so we're, we've still got a lot. I mean, we've got uh, some larger ones, some smaller ones. I mean, there's nothing super exciting about them just yet because they are too young to be colorful. But they're awesome fish, and they will, they will get a red hump on their, uh, kind of on their head, and they'll get some color, and they're going to look nice when they get older. But with a lot of cichlids, you have to have a little bit of patience, and these are one of those fish where patience is going to be rewarded if you stick it out with these guys. They're going to get big. They will get to be 8 to 10 inches. We do have a um, breeder po profile on them. I'll put a card up in the description, but these are really cool. I like them quite a bit. Moving on up, we have the gold ocelotus tank. So here we have one there, another one looking at us by his shell. Oh, there's the big male. And there he is. And they really colored up nice. The males look fantastic. This is a female over here. Less color. And she actually did at one point have a couple fry and I didn't get them out and now they're gone. So next time I see them, I will remove them and put them in their own tank because the one thing about the gold ocelotus is they will eat their fry. So they're not like the Maltese and some of the other shell dwellers where they can live in a community and the, and the adults for more or less leave them alone. The fry, that is. These guys don't. They eat them, and we lost a couple uh, recently. So I will make sure to get them out as soon as I see them next time. So uh, we're moving on up again. This is the pink flamingo guppy tank. Did a species profile on that, on these guys. And I, again, I will put that in the card up above. But you can see tons and tons of fry. So definitely over 20. They're up in that uh, hornwort. They're all along here. They're behind that plant, behind the sponge filter. Very cool. Like these guys quite a bit. For a guppy, they are pretty awesome looking. And we come on over to our tens. So our tens. This is a tank that had a group of Java rice fish that were getting old, and now I just I'm down to one, or maybe two females and a pleco in here. This will have to be. Uh, we'll do something else with this tank. This tank has one female, a pisto cockatoides. The male died, so she's all by herself. 
This one has all of the Eureka Red Fry. And again, we did a species profile and I will put that in the description as well. Down here, we have the Oreochromis nicolatus. This is the Nile Perch. I'm sorry, Nile Tilapia. And they're gonna get big. They're gonna get to be close to two feet. Very active, crazy aggressive eaters. They'll eat just about anything. Uh, they're not, they haven't been super aggressive with one another, especially considering these are all stuck in a 10 gallon. Most likely I'm gonna bring these to auction uh, when it comes up, but they are cool looking fish for someone who's got a larger tank. These things are, are definitely interesting. I've got one in a 125 right now, uh, but yeah, pretty neat. And over here, we have the star sapphires, uh, still young, still brown. They will color up eventually, I promise, but they just haven't yet. Over here, we've got some Kenii, Imbuna cichlids. Not really planning to breed these. I really got them because we've got the Imbuna tank in the other room, and I would like to put these in there when they get a little bit bigger. There are also two Red Empress that I would like to put back in the 75 with the rest of the Red Empress as they get a little bit larger. Here we have more Geophagus Steindacteri. These are smaller ones. Stuff floating around as baby brines, so they were eating that. Uh, great little fish, pretty easy to raise the fry. Over here, again, we've got some baby brine, so forgive all the little spots and everything. This is mom, and this is a dragon blood, and it's a dragon blood female, and she was in with Red Empress, and wouldn't you know it, I am pretty sure that this, the fry are hybrid between dragon bloods, and these other fry look exactly like Red Empress, so um, I will probably get rid of these as just mixed peacocks. Uh, but I'm, I, I want to, I probably am going to keep a couple of these Red Empress looking fish, the silvery ones, just to see what happens in terms of their color. I'm kind of interested to see how they turn out. Over here is really interesting. So these fish were sold to us as firemouth cichlids. And I don't know about you, but I don't think these are firemouth cichlids. So this is the dominant fish in this tank whatever that is and then if you look back here that fish uh, get out of the way dominant male uh, that fish is basically a, a real light orange with a dark orange tail we got another one over there the rest of them are kind of brown with splotchy so whatever this thing is it is probably not a fire mouth uh, I, I suspect they may be red devil mixes perhaps I don't know but yeah, we uh, luckily we only paid a dollar or two for them. Um, so we'll have to figure out what to do with these. I kind of like those lighter ones, so I'm probably going to keep them. Uh, these guys, um, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're interesting. They've got an interesting personality. So we'll have to see what, uh, what becomes of them. I'm kind of interested to see what kind of colors they turn out with. All right, everybody, so there you have it. That's the other side of the fish room of the 20 tanks that are over there. We're excited to see some of these fish growing up. We're excited to see the color changes. We're looking forward to redoing some of those tanks and make them look a little bit nicer. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.